Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're tackling a tricky one, the earliest and latest rounds where players compete. This problem is a great example of how a seemingly simple setup can lead to some really interesting logic. We'll break down the rules, explore the core ideas, and build up to an efficient solution. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the setup. We have a tournament with N players, all lined up in a single row. In each round, the first player in line competes against the last player, the second player competes against the second to last, and so on. Here's the twist. For any match that doesn't involve our two special players, we get to decide who wins. This choice is what creates different scenarios. After each round, the winners line back up in their original number order. Our goal is to find the absolute earliest round our two players could possibly meet, and also the absolute latest round they could meet. Let's walk through the example. We have 11 players, and we're watching player 2 and player 4. To get the earliest meeting, we want to eliminate players around them, but we also must ensure they both win their own matches to stay in the tournament. The key is realizing that their positions change based on how many other winners there are with smaller numbers. It's a bit of a puzzle. For the latest round, we do the opposite. We try to keep as many players between them as possible by carefully picking winners in other matches. As you can see, trying to simulate every single possibility would get out of hand really fast. This suggests we need a more structured approach. So, if brute force simulation is out, what's the alternative? This is where dynamic programming comes in. The trick to any DP problem is defining the state. Instead of tracking every single player, what if we only track what's essential? The actual numbers of the other players don't really matter. What matters is how many players are to the left of our first player, how many are between our two players, and how many are to the right. Let's call these counts x fritz, y fritz, and z. This simplified state gives us a powerful way to think about the problem without getting lost in the details. Okay, this is the most complex part, so let's break it down. If we know the counts x pris, y pris, and z for the current round, how do we find the counts for the next round? First, we know the total number of players. It's just x plus y plus z frads, plus our two special players. Now imagine the line of players. Some from the x group on the left will play against, some from the z group on the right, some from the y group in the middle might play each other. By figuring out these matchups, we can determine the minimum and maximum number of players from each group that can possibly advance. To find the earliest meeting, we'll make choices that shrink the middle group, y, as fast as possible. To find the latest meeting, we'll do the opposite and try to keep y as large as possible. This logic gives us the transition from one state to the next. So we'll create a function that takes our state, the counts x, y, and z, and returns both the earliest and latest rounds from that point forward. The base case is simple. If our two players are matched up against each other in the current state, we've found a meeting. That takes one round. So we return one, for both earliest and latest. For the recursive part, we calculate all the possible next states. Then, we call our function on each of those future states. To find the overall earliest round, we take the minimum result from all those future calls and add one for the current round. For the latest, we take the maximum and add 1. And of course, since we'll be seeing the same states over and over, we'll use memoization to cache the results. This is what makes the solution fast. Alright, here is the complete code. It might look a little intimidating, but it's just implementing the logic we discussed. You can see our main function, dp, which takes the counts x, y, and z. The at liu underscore cache decorator handles the memoization for us automatically, which is super convenient. The nested loops are iterating through all possible numbers of winners from each group, the X group, Y group, and Z group. Inside, it performs checks to make sure the combination of winners is valid based on the tournament pairing rules. Finally, it makes the recursive call with the new state and updates the minimum and maximum round counts. The initial call at the end just converts our input player numbers into the very first state, X comma spy Z. 